Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here in the forum of the Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. We are going on with our program here in the forum, and uh, there are most interesting topics. I would like to welcome you all, invite you to have a seat, have a drink on the house, and uh, participate in the next discussion. I always, uh, also would like to uh, um, thank uh, all the people in the internet for joining us right now. Uh, so hello to everyone. We are now talking about the on-site, on-demand, a safe and lossless form of hydrogen production and solid state storage. And I would like to welcome uh, from Rouge Hydrogen Engineering GmbH, the president right next to me, Sable Huang. Welcome here on stage. I would like to welcome Florian von Hoven, our middle. He's the managing director and CEO. And opposite to me, Dr. Gernot Wojtic. He's project manager, research and development of Rouge Hydrogen Engineering GmbH. And whenever you have a question about uh, our topic, about the device we've shown you uh, down there, just raise your hand. I'll come with the microphone right to you so we can uh, clear all your questions right away. Um, Ms. Wang, it's good to have you here on stage again. Uh, and I think something has happened during the last year, since last year. A lot of uh, things seem to have changed. I had a look at your booth, of course. There's a big unit there. Uh, what, what is going on? What were the latest progress in your company? Inside that uh, unit is our uh, latest development uh, of Re patented and uh, highly integrated reactors. And uh, many people asked us if it's a uh, reforming, reformer, steam reformer, and uh, it's definitely not. Uh, is it a reactor with a part of steam reforming function, but the purification and uh, peak coverage storage are the most valuable functions we can offer. Very nice. We, we talk about this technical details later, yes, yeah. with your R&D uh, manager. But I, I have the impression you are personally very involved in your project. It's, it's coming right from your heart. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Why is it so? What, what is so special about this project for you? Um, I think it's, thank God I have an amazing team and uh, my vision is happen to be very close to my team members. So our vision is to uh, let every community produce bio hydrogen or clean hydrogen inside the community to build up a sustainable hydrogen society in the future. So each community itself can be uh, energy autark. It's a very nice vision, I would really like to say. Mr. Van Hoven, uh, you, are, you are the CEO and uh, you're in charge of developing the company and to keep the, the money together, of course. Um, but on the same uh, side, you, you have, have chosen for, a, I would say, a niche product because everybody is talking about electrolyzers at the moment and you say, no, why not? Why not doing steam reforming? It's, it's not such a bad idea to do steam reforming. Tell me why you chose that technology. Well, we have a nice saying in German, which is, um, you do not stand very well on just one leg. And I think that is basically something we should think about. There is a big electrolyzer hype going on at the moment. And of course, electrolyzers uh, are a very important part of our hydrogen future. But I think that there is other ways, like our chemical looping process, other ways to produce hydrogen, which are also very interesting for certain applications depending really on the situation that you find, because not every situation is ideal for an electrolyzer, and especially our vision, which is really focusing on the decentralized application, bringing uh, hydrogen easily to almost any place, um, is um, a vision which can be accomplished very well with the product that we, and, the, and the process that we have chosen. 
everybody thinks electrolyzers is always green, but it's not if the, if the current is not green behind it, I'm not coming from renewables. The same with steam reforming. Steam reforming can be green, can't it? That's true. And well, first of all, I would like to say that I think that this is being seen a little bit too religiously at the moment sometimes. And sometimes the, the label that is on it is not really what is in it, you know. Uh, it, no matter which uh, technology we are talking about. But of course, if we use biogas, for example, in a, a chemical looping process or in a reforming process, then we are totally carbon neutral. So then we can really call that uh, green hydrogen. Um, if we just use natural gas, it is still a really, really serious improvement. And uh, if you think about the part of our customers which are using hydrogen already, like in their production processes and so on, in industrial processes, um, then we replace dirty trucks that uh, transport um, hydrogen hundreds of kilometers through the countries to deliver their bottles there. We replace uh, manpower, we replace a very bad carbon footprint with an on-site production where all these things do not appear anymore. So then uh, to say this is not a step forward or a progress or to require everything has always to be 100% calm neutral, I think goes a little bit too far. I think we should be a little bit more open-minded to every improvement that we can make. Mr. Van Oven, I just learned from Linde that uh, about 50% of the hydrogen fueling station in Germany uh, run on hydrogen made by steam reforming and they're probably brought there by trailers. So uh, they could could uh, produce the hydrogen on site, on demand, which is a very nice product for hydrogen refueling stations then, wouldn't it be? I totally agree. I mean, the, the ideal situation, and there are situations that you can find on the, on the map or in the reality which are like that, like you have a, a highway where just 500 or 300 meters away is a biogas plant and uh, just 300 meters away from that is a resting station in a highway that you can just put our container there, feed it with a biogas and you have a totally carbon neutral green hydrogen without any big infrastructure uh, investments, etc. That is, for instance, one of these you call niche applications. Of course, it will not fit for every situation. But, of course, with our product, you can also use any place where you have a natural gas supply and immediately produce the hydrogen right on site. Dr. Wojtic, you are one of the technical heads of the on-site on-demand project. Can you explain us the main advantages of your product from a technical point of view? Here is the product. You can show us that there, exactly. Yeah, so one of the main advantages of the process clearly is the hybrid production of hydrogen directly in the process itself compared to other gas processing technologies. Uh, we use the chemical looping uh, process which enables us the separation of carbon containing feedstock from our, from our hydrogen product stream and thus generating hydrogen which is uh, usable directly in, in low temperature fuel cells without any additional purification steps. And uh, another big advantage of this chemical looping process clearly is this high flexibility uh, regarding uh, process operation flexibility. So it has this uh, solid stage stor storage capabilities which can be used during continuous production to cover periods of high demand or low demand by buffering uh, inside the reactor itself. Uh, and the chemical looping uh, process also enables uh, high fuel or feedstock flexibility, which gives us, from the technical point of view, uh, a lot of challenges. We can use different feedstock all uh, to convert them to hydrogen, which is very interesting from a technical point of view. So, Mr. Vajtic, if I understand it right, it is, this is a, a device for continuous steam reforming. You can do steam re reforming with it, of course. You even purify the hydrogen in there and you can store it. Uh, are there different parts of, of this tube where you store it and where you do the steam reforming? Or does, how does it work? Well, the main part is the, is the chemical looping and the, pro, uh, the steam reformer is more or less the adjacent part, depending on the feedstock. Uh, and the chemical looping uh, stores the chemical energy during the two processes which are separated. Uh, so the, f the charging and the discharging. Uh, and during continuous production, uh, 
you can simply uh, change the, the operation uh, parameter to store the, the energy. You could also uh, use it as a long time storage if you cool it down and the chemical energy is stored inside the material for long time storage. And what efficiency can you get uh, with this device? Uh, well, the process efficiency we calculated uh, using reforming and chemical looping uh, theoretically is in the range of 63 65%, depending on the feedstock. Uh, for example, biogas, depending on the methane content. Uh, process or system efficiency now, because we have the, the core unit as a prototype on the booth, but we're also constructing the prototype system itself with all the additional components, and we expect efficiency to be in the range of 50 to 55%. Uh, so in terms of thermal efficiency regarding hydrogen output, and this would be a great accomplishment for the first unit. And what about the purity? So the hydrogen that comes out can be used in PEM fuel cells? Yeah, the purity, uh, the target has always to be uh, directly usable for PEM fuel cells. So the purity should be the 5.0 purity with CO, CO2 concentrations in the low BPM range, yes. So 99.999% exactly. you can reach, very yes. good. Mr. Von Oven, I had a look at your stand design and, and uh, at your website as well, your brochure, and uh, there's a new video on your, on your website as well. So I always see, I can see these, these uh, smaller communities, uh, rather rural areas, you could say. Uh, is that a, um, a way you would like to head uh, for? Because you were talking about biogas and they, will, they are produced in rural areas. Yeah, I think that most of the examples and application suggestions and so on that I see are very city driven, you know. I think many people in our business probably live in cities and see it from a city point of view or metropolitan point of view. But of course, we in Austria, but also in Germany, Switzerland, and not to talk about uh, areas outside of Europe, there's many small communities that also have a right to be a part of a future hydrogen society. And with a decentralized, uh, very cost-efficient system, I think this can be accomplished much easier, you know? Whether it's a small community that wants to change into a hydrogen community, of course, that can also be um, a logistic center or something like that, you know? Uh, it's just the idea is always you are independent, you have your a source of gas or biogas or whatever and you do inside the frame that you have what you think is right without being dependent on the, the uh, big developments. And the use of the hydrogen in rural areas you would say is also mobility or what, what do you think of? It's definitely also mobility. Yeah. Just imagine, for example, you, you want to have a, a small bus system in a, in a community with two, three thousand people or so. Um, again, it can also be a logistic center, which is a little bit outside of uh, a downtown area. Uh, and uh, any fleet application, of course, where buses or German Post is another example, for instance, you know, where the post cars have to come back to one certain place at night and have to be refilled very quickly. Um, so let's say w whenever you do not think about the hydrogen highway, how fast do I get from Hamburg to Munich with a hydrogen car, which is also important, of course, but you think a little more local, I think there's a lot of development chance, especially when you have a product which is in a reason reasonable price range and can be run at very, very low operating cost. Mr. Wojtic, uh, to speak again about uh, um, numbers, uh, how much hydrogen can I get out of a device like that per hour? How many cubic meters? So in our prototype system, uh, the core unit, we have four reactors. So this is actually just a shrink model. Okay. Oh. Uh, four reactors. Um, and this core unit will be uh, able to produce 20 cubic meters, norm cubic meters. 20 hours. cubic meters. And, and the big device you can see on, on your booth, how, much, exactly. how many cubic meters can they produce? That, that's, that is that's the, the that, device. That's but, the one. Uh, we, it's now... Uh, fit with four reactors, but it can also hold six reactors. It, yeah, it's, it's scalable. 
It's scalable, of course. Yeah, you can can use two of them, and and you yeah, have the double. Then the, there will be yeah, the numbering up. Indeed, yes. yes. Mr. Wojcik, you have been researching and inventing in this uh, field of uh, technology in the hydrogen sector for almost 10 years already. Uh, would you agree that uh, the vision of the daily use of hydrogen as an energy carrier slowly become a reality? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, from the scientific point of view, I was always fascinated by gas processing and hydrogen technology, but it is now uh, really great to see how the, those applications uh, become integrated in, in the daily life. Uh, and I think uh, it's, it's moving at a steady level, and this, the hydrogen train will not stop until it has reached its final destination, and it's part of our uh, day life in, in different applications. And you're helping to make it happy, happen, and you also help to make it happen. Ms. Huang, last question goes to you. Where do you see the, the future of your company and as well of your investment? Because you are the big investor in that company. Thanks to Gernot and uh, Florian and the rest of my team members, I think we have been very healthy financially and uh, very successful. So I believe that in the future we will have a very sustainable uh, business. Sustainable business and also for a sustainable nature and environment. Thank yeah. you very much for this. And if you have a, uh, the wish to, to have a look at this, uh, I would say a down-to-earth solution for a zero emission sustainable energy economy, just go over to the booth, booth of Rooch uh, Hydrogen. It's just over there. And you can also see the big unit there um, and its output there. And any uh, questions you might have, you can uh, give the uh, lady and the gentleman over there. I would like to thank you very much for this discussion here on stage. I would like to thank you for joining us here in the forum. Thank you very much. Thank you as well. <laughs>